Good morning. I have a child and a cat fighting for the place <laughs> to sit on me. Um, yeah, good morning. Today's the weather is good and um, even more than that, I have, my hair are wet. I need to dry them. Children toys down here and Tola and Angatha are making breakfast. The day is always good if my husband is making breakfast. <laughs> the day starts with a good with a good start. <laughs> um, it's funny, like he absolutely loves when I make breakfast, but I love when he makes breakfast, so we have to like balance it <laughs> somehow. Outfit of the day. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have a new stand for Agatha and Adeline, which is like the the kind of like Montessori thing. Who is cooking, you or Agatha? I'm just a chef. Chef? Yes, I'm just looking to see what I'm doing. We have cold corn leftovers. Do you do? Yes, do you do? Я же не еду. Ты не ждешь, еду, ты This cat loves to hug so much. The black one, she doesn't care, but this one, she just climbs on me and just hugs with me all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>, so cute. Is it ready? Wow. Sour cream because <laughs> because <laughs> because <laughs> because <laughs> more sour cream. Okay, now they are eating. They should be quiet, <laughs> but it, it's not one hundred percent. This is condensed milk. Sour cream and uh, Tola took some Azerbaijanian jam. Um, this is raspberry jam. And we are having breakfast. Mm -hmm. These are called Sirniki. Many years ago I filmed the recipe on my channel, but anyway, I'll leave it in the comments down below. So this is this is what they look like, like little suns. Tolia makes a big portion every time because our kids eat them like they eat a lot. <laughs> they don't eat anything else but these these things they eat a lot. So I put um, Adeline to sleep. Tolia went to his meeting he has to, today 
and I wanted to show you this this guy um, so it's in addition to our first one that we had here we got a second one so this guy we plan to have for our books and this guy we planned to get for children's books and Agatha put some of her books here already I put a little more board games in here I found them and I need to organize this one now I also have a little bit of knickknacks that I wanted to put more around here so I need to organize them now because Agatha just took everything she found yesterday and put them here but they're kind of like a mess in here <laughs> there is a mix of books that are for a little bit of older age the books that she reads now like i need to go through them a little bit and put them on the shelves so i thought you might be interested in some of them i can show you and just go through the books with you together uh, we kind of don't have that many because we've been moving all the time and unfortunately i can't buy kids books in russian here because they don't sell them basically <laughs> because it's another country they their local language is georgian so they don't have books in russian the only option i have is to order some of the books and ask like order some of them in russia and ask my friends or relatives when they're coming to bring them here so we don't have that many and i also thought about using these two lower shelves for adeline's book books that are like like cardboard books that with hard pages and keep these ones on higher shelves because adeline is tearing them apart but it turns out that we almost don't have books for Adeline because um, our friends borrowed them for the next month. Agatha put all of her um, books just on the couch and she says it's a, her book store. So we have two Bibles in here in Russia. These actually are my childhood Bibles, like from when I was a kid. I took them from my parents' house, they kept them. so. This is also from my childhood, it's Encyclopedia in English. This is my childhood book with Russian stories. I love this one the most. And this one is also my childhood book with um, Russian stories. But Adeline tore it apart. As I said, she's tearing apart all the books. This is also about animals. We can make for Adeline. These are also stories like from russian author that i had as a kid it's about little warm <laughs> but they're too complicated for editor this is also i had it as a kid it's these are words in english um i think it's a very popular book in english but the one that i had originally uh, was lost and i just found a new one for kids and these are like special memories for me when I read it every time because I remember these pages so well I, I loved it as a kid we have Paddington in here Agatha loves it Paddington we have these one this is also I think popular series with this old man and the kitten uh, about Petson we have two books with Russian folklore, like little poems and stuff for little children, but they are so weird. <laughs> I mean, like, they're just weird. <laughs> uh, they have some classic stories, but I just don't like most of them. And they also have most of the stories are you know they're very old folklore stuff so they use weird old language that my kid yeah. does not understand she just doesn't get what is written there and she doesn't enjoy them much so i think i should declutter them they're beautiful though but she just they're i don't i don't i don't know like they were in the list of classic 
things you can buy for children, but I don't, I don't like them. <laughs> Not all the classics are worth buying and reading, I think. So I think we should. Yeah, we have Chicken Bricky series. Addition of Chicken Bricky. They're in this bookstore now. I can't take them. I love these two series with mice. Sis. Mice. Uh, these are Japanese Japanese author. I want to get more of these. They're very cute. Yeah, it's about 14 mouse. And they're so they're just so cute. Okay. This was also I don't remember when we, where we got this one, but it's for babies and it's in English and it's very beautiful. There's just some a little poem about the baby bear. Agatha doesn't understand when I read it because it's in English and she doesn't know English. But she likes the pictures. This is Agatha's bookstore. She took all the books in here. <laughs> I put it down a little bit so now you probably can see me. Funny thing about this book, about Noah's Ark. It is almost impossible to find any Christian literature in Russian language for children, except the Bible itself. There are some like Orthodox, like Eastern Orthodox books I've seen, like stories and stuff. But when it comes to more just classic stories from the Bible or like more Protestant literature, it's almost impossible, there are almost no options at all. So, I literally, this is not a Christian book. So this is like a Noah's Ark written by, I think, a non-believer, non just as a story, you know, like a, like a little legend. It's just her inter interpretation a little bit, but it's mostly about the animals. So it's not about the whole story itself, it's mostly like, how animals were hanging out at the Noah's Ark. It has beautiful pictures, but it has no information about God, about where the rain came from, where the flood came from, like what was going on, why the like how the animals got to the ark and who is Noah, like nothing. So I have to just add some information just on the go while I'm reading it. And it's kind of funny, but the book itself is very beautiful and it's still about Noah's Ark. So it's still kind of what I wanted, but we don't have Christian books. <laughs> In Russian, they're literally like, they're almost none. They're almost none. There are some very limited like amount that you can find online in Russia, but just comparing to English, speaking world, we have almost nothing, <laughs> almost zero. <laughs> This one I love so much. This is not a Russian book, so it is translated. I don't know the original English name, but author is Rachel Piercy, and it's Vimal book, and it's all year in the all year round in the forest. At least it's like what they wrote in Russian here, and it is so beautiful. Like, guys, it is so beautiful. You need to kind of find different things in each page they have a little poem every time and the list of things you need to find but i also just ask agatha to find some extra when she's done with these so it's very beautiful i just love how beautiful it is it has like golden things in here like mm, i love it so much oh this is a vintage thing the book itself is not vintage but it's a reprint, modern reprint of a vintage book. So the book itself is new. It's from 2022, but the original, the original book was from, I think, 60s. It's about learning letters. So it's like letter P in Russian, letter R, R, R in Russian, SH. This is like m, m, whatever. <laughs> it has some numbers even, and there there are vintage pictures which I think are super cute, and the colors they used are super nice. 
and very comfortable to look at. Not crazy, you know, neon colors they use nowadays. I mean, I'm sure there are many books like that uh, that are beautiful, but I didn't, like in Russian, I didn't find anything that would look nice, like anything at all. Everything had crazy pictures and super colorful things. They have little things to learn the letters, how to write it in like handwriting. They had some extra pictures and yeah. So there is usually a problem with Soviet textbooks um, for children. They usually have quite a lot of Soviet uh, like propaganda in them. And they have like Lenin and Stalin and all of that. But I think this one does not because it's literally a book for toddlers to learn, like for, for little children to learn how to read. So it, it basically has nothing like that, but it has vintage pictures and I thought it's super cute. So we have it, I got it, and I'm, I'm excited. Um, about teaching Agatha how to read using that. I also have this one. It's also a reprint from Soviet book. They have literally it's a vintage comic book with funny like stories. It has little words in here and describing the situation. And mostly it's like kind of like funny situations. Or are they supposed to be funny? <laughs> so yeah, it's interesting. Agatha likes it. We also have this book, uh, which Agatha also likes, but it's hard to read for her because it's um, Astrid Lindgren book. It says, I don't know the original name, but in Russian it says, Island South Kroka, um, Bunny for Pele. It has a lot of like Scandinavian names in it, names of the islands they're visiting. It's a very beautiful book and it's a funny story, like an interesting one about the guys um, having a little adventure. Yeah, and getting a bunny for one of them. They're like sailing and stuff, but it has so many uncommon like Scandinavian names that it's pretty hard for Agatha to, to like focus on the story because she's like, what is the name? <laughs> Every time, and I have hard times to read them because sometimes the island names are so long and so complicated that I just like, uh, island. <laughs> I have one more like vintage book. It is very vintage. <laughs> I think it's from my childhood or maybe I don't know whose childhood my grandma's make. I don't know. It's 1987. So it's also a Russian author and these are stories about forests and people living in the village and their like little forests, how they go foraging and hunting and uh, like observe the nature, how they love the birds and the animals who live around. I think a little bit complicated for Agatha at the moment. I have a little bit of thin paper books, but I got them because they have big pictures. So this is a Russian folklore story, Adel and Tear the Depart. Uh, but it has funny pictures. I kind of like them. These are also Soviet books reprinted, like they're old. They used to print them like that back in the USSR. I really love the pictures. And these are like all time, like classic poems. So I decided to get them anyway. They're like, <laughs> they, the book feels new because it's a new book, but the pictures are so old looking like really vintage vibes. This is a book about moms. It has several poems about moms. I didn't find anything about dads, unfortunately, because back then dads were not taking part in children's life that much. They've been mostly just working all the time. This is just a book for looking at the pictures and finding some fun stuff here. But it's, it is with the Soviet 
um, cars and all the like transport of different kinds, how the cities looked back then with all the vintage cars. I think it's also pretty fun to look at. Yeah, I like to make like this is New Year and all of this just looks like magic. I like to mix vintage books with modern books. I want to get encyclopedias for kids, like modern ones, with all the new research, all of that. When Agatha will get a little older, she's four now, she is not that much interested in encyclopedias. But I remember as, like in my early teenage years, I loved them so much. And also mixing with some old classic like literature with old vintage pictures, I think they look very cute. This is also a poem. You see, they, they used to bring milk in glasses and then you drink the milk and then you give the glasses back to the milkmen. They used to bring them in, in these big cars that says milk. This is an addition to the previous book. Um, this is also about letters, to so the previous vintage book about letters. This is also about letters, but it is a little bit, I think, more advanced for a little older kids. Yeah. And this one, actually, this one has, like, let me show you. <laughs> this one has these guys, of course. Um, so this is by Russian modern author. She's She's pretty young, she's also an immigrant nowadays, unfortunately. And she's, a, she's an illustrator, not really an author, but more an illustrator. And we, we have, I think, three books from her, and I'm waiting for the fourth one to come. And they're mostly for, I would say, either teenagers or adults who have a little bit nostalgic <laughs> emotions. <laughs> so this one is about the girl who lives in Kamchatka and she's a teenager, like she doesn't have friends. It has like very, very Eastern European vibes in it. It has like Russian just things like you can, you can look at the pictures and you can kind of see. So these are a little bit of information about what she likes and how she's dreaming about having a friend. And then she likes to come to the sea and use her light to like um, just check how far the light would go. And then the story just goes reverses. It starts from the beginning about the boy who lives in Chile, which is on the opposite side of the ocean from Kamchatka. And it talks about him, how he has also a family and things he likes and how he doesn't have friends also, how he's dreaming about a friend. And then he also likes to come to the ocean and see how far his light would go. And then one day they, like, they saw each other's lights. Obviously it's impossible, but it's like such a sweet book. It's also a little bit complicated for Agatha to understand, but if I don't treat everything that is in there and a little simplified, she understands. But I just, I love the illustrations yeah. and the nostalgic vibes this book has. And we have two more from the, the author. I'll show you them in a second. Oh, we have three books from her, okay. I'm sorry, but we have three books. So from, um, from the same illustrator, this is the history of Russia from a perspective of one apartment. I think in Moscow, there is how people used to live like before the revolution. This is how they lived. And then they have a new year and everything is nice. Then the revolution happens. And yeah, then the second world war and then the late USSR years. And it has, it keeps the track of all the people who lived in that apartment. So it's, it's a very special one for me. This one is not related to Russia. It's about different farmers market all around the world. 
uh, it says worldwide farmers markets also in Russian Russian authors so I don't I don't know I don't know if it's in English so I, I would not even recommend you <laughs> to buy them because I think they they don't have them in English even so I'm just I'm just basically want to show you to kind of show my treasures guys so this is about Trans-Siberian Railways and it has all about the different stations the different cities the train passes and the different like villages and um, traditions and some interesting food people have in different places because Trans-Siberian Railway goes through a giant piece of <laughs> the world basically the whole Russia so yeah and I really like the illustrations so we have three of these and I'll hide them somewhere on the top shelf because I don't want to, the kids to be able to reach them Agatha can look at them but only occasionally and with me because otherwise they just leave them all around the apartment and then I find them torn apart I really want to have quite a big library at home, like home library of books in Russian for children. Not for me, I don't really keep books. I usually, if I read a book, I either read it online or I read it and then donate it. So this shelf is the only ones I have at the moment. I only keep books if I didn't read them yet and I want to read them or if they're like a special edition they mean something to me or they're just a rare classic books I want to keep for children like they have special edition of War and Peace I don't think you can really buy them looking like that maybe you can but they're like very beautiful and they were a gift from my husband so yeah I have a little bit of English books with this edition they're very beautiful so i keep them too because they're just special so because they the books are so hard to find for children i really want to keep them because not living in your home country they will learn english anyway they will probably grow up english speaking but i want them to still have a strong sense and knowledge of their mother language so they would not just you know forget it and speak English only I want them to to know both and be able to read in both and be able to speak fluently in both so I really want to keep a nice collection of books for them and because they are hard to get I really like <laughs> I use every opportunity to get some more for them because like we can't go to the library here they are mostly like in, in either Georgian books or a little bit of English books in the library I can't use the library so I need to have books at home um, and I need to order them and ask people to bring them in order to have them so I'm really like keeping them and I realized that this part of our life like children's books will not be a minimalist type of any kind because I really want them to have pretty much all the books I'll, I'll like and they would like to read Russian classics you know right now it's children's stories but maybe in the future it will be like Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and all of that so I feel like we'll have I hope we'll have pretty big collection right now I have quite a big list of things that I still want to get and I also uh, because children grow, like Agatha is growing, so I can get uh, more and more books for her, which are appropriate to her age. And I keep the, the ones for littles for Adeline. Okay, my list grows and grows. I don't really like books like Chicken Bricky and stuff like that. They're not from Russian speaking authors, but so I don't really see the need to keep them in Russian specifically. And probably like if i if i want i'll just buy them in english here if i find them in english here but when it comes to like specifically russian authors i want them to be in their original language 
So yeah, it just depends on the author. I had my Harry Potter books that I was reading as a kid, but they were a little bit like in the bad condition already. And I also thought, you know what, like it's not the original language they've written in. So I prefer kids to read them in the original language, like in English when they grow a little bit. All the other books like Lord of the Rings and stuff like that, I want them to be able to read in the original language. So what do we have in here? We have like classic fairy tales, stories, you know, like Cat in the Boots, Aladdin's Lamp, just very, very classic things like Sleeping Beauty, like Cinderella and stuff like that. But some of the stories I'm fine about, but some of them, they're just, I don't know, maybe they were fine back then, but nowadays they feel like, I feel that they're just so creepy and like dramatic. When it comes to old Russian folklore, I was not reading almost like most of the stories to Agatha because in each story, like some animal, <laughs> you know, got some, like something bad was happening to them, like very bad. And every time I was like, you know what, that's not the kind of story I want you to hear when you're a three-year-old, even if it's a classic one. <laughs> so yeah, because I remember when I was a kid, I was so like shocked by some of these stories as a child that I was like, I don't know, maybe it's okay to not read them to children. So this is also about letters, but it's little poems about letters and professions. And I bought it because of the pictures, mostly, and because of the author. The author who wrote this book is not actually a children's book author. He was writing poems, and he was also an immigrant many, many, many years ago. He immigrated, I think, like from the Soviet Union. Yeah, but he, he was, he's a very famous one. Also, like, classic Pushkin. Russian author also poems. These are poems and fairy tales at the same time, but they're also, I think they're suitable for a little bit of an older, older age. Mary Poppins, I had it as a kid. It's actually my childhood book, but Mary Poppins is not for a four year old, I think. So these poems, we usually learn at school as part of the classic literature Mom. curriculum usually learn them by heart yeah some more classics also for the picture oh this is my childhood from my childhood this is the book i loved as a kid it's uh, patricia st john oh, uh, Treasures of the Snow, I think in English name, it's in Russian here, I kept it as, as a childhood book. We need a book! This is also, I think, from my brother's childhood, so he doesn't need it, it just was among all the children's books at home. Also not originally in Russian, but since we already had it, I decided to take it. Also a poem that I bought because of the beautiful pictures and just just art art things. Like I love books with beautiful pictures. If there is a book without pictures or with like not very beautiful ones, I'll pay twice more. Tola asked me if there will be enough space to keep one shelf, I guess this one, for his Lego set that has been in the box for the past two years because we didn't have any space to put it. So I hope I can keep this shelf empty for his Lego set. He will be so excited. Это моя книжка? Ну, это 
все это ли не лежит? Вот это. So when it comes to books, I put them like that. These are Adeline's for now. Since we have just a little bit of them, I put them with the front, like a more Montessori style. Agatha can easily find the book she wants by the like this part. So I decided not to bother myself with the front. Yeah, I think you understand what I mean. And here are the books that are for the older age and the books that I only read with her together that I don't let her touch by herself only. These she can she can take whenever she wants and just read. And these ones are just a little bit more special. These two are the curriculum books. I also decided to keep them here because we're still reading it only together when learning letters. So I decided to keep them here. And I was able to keep the shelf empty for Tolo's Lego. I hope it will fit here. And this shelf is empty too, but while I was talking, Agatha already decided that it's better to put your toys down there. So, yeah, I guess we have no choice now. I also found two more things that, that I would like to put somewhere here because I don't know any other place to put them. So, this is a little dusty. This is the the silver YouTube silver button, uh, maybe maybe somewhere here. We don't have any other place for it, so I'm thinking maybe here. Well, it works for now. Maybe I'll find a better place. My granddad's vintage camera, maybe here. I'll not touch these books in a while, probably. So. Um. Our cube. Uh, let's see. Let's make it like this the most. But they don't fold, so okay. We'll keep it like that. Like that? Looks kind of fine. I'll declutter these books and it will be empty. And I can place some more awardish style of things on top. <laughs> Agatha ah! always finds what to put on the shelf. Now I have to read because because we organized the book, so of course it's reading time now. Agatha is just shooting what she wants. Хорошо. English Encyclopedia. Oh, смотри эти дельфины. Про что ты хочешь читать? Про медведях. Про медведя. Это корова. Корова. Окей. Okay. Our water is off. So I called Tolly and asked if he wants to get pizza for us on his way back home because I can't cook without water. So I guess we're having pizza, which is not that bad, <laughs> actually. So, what do we have? Pepperoni here and capricciosa with mushrooms and ham. And I'll keep the leftovers for snacks. I think. <laughs> yeah, hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.